I think it's always going to be a trade-off between systems and improving what Second Life can do. Yeah, we, we have to you know proceed with this pretty carefully, and that's, again, one of the reasons why we're doing the mainland first. We want to start there. We want to watch it for a little while, uh, and then we'll roll it out to the private estates being you know basically our more premium product. We want to make sure that we're doing all of our due diligence and ensuring that this is going to work out for the best for everybody. Right. So when is the change going to happen? Well, it's already started. Uh, officially launching today on November 3rd. Uh, the uh, the mainland regions, um, as they've been going through their usual weekly restarts when those occur, um, have in fact already started to see the benefit from this, and some folks may have already seen that or heard of it. Uh, so by the time um, basically uh, November 3rd has Hello. come around, test, um, test. that'll Hello. already be at play. Can you hear us? Yep. Oh, that's fantastic. And can you hear us? then from yeah, there, you'll roll it out throughout the grid. Yeah, um, mainland okay. first, uh, and then we are targeting are within you? the next couple of months to then so do I'm the I'm going to raise uh, the screen so you can see me and Patch, who've been hiding behind it. And actually, if people can type, any questions that they have, that would be brilliant. <laughs> well, everyone's very welcome. I am really glad that we were able to finally do something like this. And yes, with luck, it should be a Christmas present for everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping we can get it out quicker. Um, I mean, in my perfect Second Life goal brain, um, I'm really actually hoping before Turkey Day. Um, it's going to be tight, though. You know, we've got, uh, you know, holiday schedules to compete with and everything. Uh, we've got another very large project that I'm sure a lot of you have been kind of eyeballing out there um, that's getting ready to come out soon. So, you know, we've got all of these kind of competing things going on and um, we're going as fast as we can. And I know that uh, people have already kind of come back and commented, why, why two months and stuff? And it, does, <laughs> and it sounds so painful to hear it and I feel it. Um, <laughs> But uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the desire there for me is to get it out as fast as possible. I you know, just have to buy myself a little bit of leeway with the caveat of a couple of months, just in case. Can I ask, when you do put it out to the private islands, will the 30,000 thing start at the same time? Or will that be kind of coming a bit later yet? Uh, yeah, that will actually be available immediately um, when we roll out to the private islands, give them their increases of the 20K, 5K, and 1K across the three different products. Um, you'll be able to upgrade immediately to the 30K the moment we get that out the door. Okay. Uh, does, uh, if someone can actually type um, what we're talking about, that would be a huge bonus. Just kind of notes on what we're talking, like that the 30K will come out at the same time as the 20K. Yeah, it, and it'll be just to, uh, you know, so folks know, it'll, it'll be uh, for you uh, folks that have private islands, it'll be sort of like the same process that you would go to support to um, have an island, you know, renamed, moved, or something like that. You would just go to them, file a support ticket um, requesting the region uh, that you would like to have increased from 20K to 30K. Um, you know, and of course, they'll do the fee approval stuff and the up upgrade fee. Um, and then, poof, you'll have it done. I, I'd be quite interested if people here could say whether they think they would want to go they'd be happy with the 20,000 or whether they'll want to jump to the 30,000 because I know there's a lot of builders uh, and landowners in the audience. <laughs> no hesitation from Kismet.
Yeah. Our pleasure, Jay Con. Shit, shit. How do you mean special regions? Hollow clock. Oh right, yes. How does it how does it affect Bay City and Nova Albion? Um, so basically it's the same calculation, just increased. Uh, the regions that had 15,000, um, and if they had like prim doubling turned on, well, now it's 22.5, and whatever that base new calculation would be is doubled. So Nova, Albion, Bay City, all of those with the double, double priming regions, uh, they're, it's the same thing. It's, it's now just doubled. Right. Brilliant. I don't know what the, uh, the calculation breakdown looks like you know off the top of my head but uh you know literally if if you had a 512 square meter parcel that would have went from 117 to 175 and if um prim doubling were turned on right you would be 350 wow on a 512 yeah <gasps> then i could plant the forest on my roof Yeah, if you were, uh, you know, a 1.5 multiplier, it would basically be the same. It would be the 175 times the 1.5, so it would be 262.5. No, it probably, I don't know if it will round up or down in that situation. I, it may round down. The simulator does that voodoo stuff, so... Um, you do need to wait until we roll out the 20k increase, the initial increase to the private regions to to apply for the 30k increase. Mm -hmm. There's no need to worry about you know applying or waiting in line or anything like that. They'll be handled super quickly. Um, it's not like we're going to run out of room. So <laughs> yeah, the, the the prim drilling rig has been working overtime out there. Um, mm -hmm. in Anwar for many, many years. Uh, people just didn't know it, but uh, I actually quadrupled uh, production there uh, mm -hmm. about four years ago to make sure that there were plenty of prims to spread around the entire grid forever. <laughs> yeah, I went over there the other week and they, it seemed to be going really busy on 24-hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> So, Engram, nothing about object lines, nothing about band lines. Sorry, it's all about prims tonight. And land impact. I think it's going to be fantastic. I mean, it gives so much potential. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Trying for the aviation and sailing community. Oh, was there a question about something like <laughs> band lines and? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'll. I'll I may it. have missed it. It's okay. Uh, I may have missed it. <laughs> okay. Tonight we're talking about prims. We'll we'll try and do something on band lines at uh, a lab chat. That's always an interesting issue. Um, mm. I haven't I haven't put a lot of focus on it recently. I may have mm. to. Ash has just asked, will this affect the number of avatars that a homestead region can take? It will not. That has not changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, Melina, did that you That would see? be correct. Yeah, uh, basically if you um, had a full region and you brought it down to the 195 uh, to then increase to the 30,000 um, object count, uh, you would pay the additional thirty dollars a month on top of the one ninety five, so that would take you to two twenty five. Um, CB, to answer your question, I'm not sure. Uh, I can check in and see what the schedule's looking like there.
uh, Holoclock, once uh, $130 to upgrade, and then $30 a month. Right, and that will that will continue to be a recurring charge on top of the the you know the monthly maintenance fee for the region um, until you decide to cancel it, and you can always cancel it. Uh, there, you can pay the thirty dollar fee to downgrade a region from thirty back to twenty thousand, uh, mm -hmm. if you should choose so. We'll have to make sure, of course, that uh, you don't have more than twenty thousand objects on the region. Uh, otherwise, you may suffer from random spurious returns. Um, and we don't want that to happen, so we'll of course make sure that before we downgrade a region, um, that it's safe to do so. A mm. um, couple of questions coming through. Um, Born Aristocrat is asking, is there extra script time capability being added? Um, no, there is not. Okay. And Worley is asking, is it possible there'll be an option for private homestead regions to be able to pay extra tier for more prim capacity on top of the 5K like the private full regions can? Uh, we did consider it. Uh, it's something that we um, are thinking about it. We have to be very, very careful with that in the mix of the, the different region products. Um, but it's something that um, I'm considering and putting a lot of thought into. I don't think it's something that uh, uh, you know will happen soon. Um, but uh, it's not to say that I'm not open to the idea. Mm. Princess Selina, um, Patch is, has said a couple of months, but is hoping if things are going well that it could be earlier. And yes, the... Um, yeah, on a large estate like Badget, it, it, Babbage, it would be 30 to the end. It's 30 per, sin, if I per region, if I understand correctly. Correct. Patch. Yeah. Yeah, per region. Per region, per month. Uh, how will we know when a particular region is going to be boosted? Will there be an announcement list or server class schedule? So we will do it like we did the the mainland rollout. Um, uh, when we we will go out and announce um, that we are going to do the upgrade um, to the private estates, uh, and it will roll out um, by server channel. Um, you know, probably starting on a Tuesday, we'll do all of the regions that are in the main second life service uh, second life server channel, and then we'll do all the um, uh, RC candidate uh, channel regions, mm -hmm. so very, very much in the same same way uh, that this this deploy happened since it went actually very successfully. Uh, that was again one of the things that we were watching and paying very close attention to in doing this. Um, and uh, since it went so smoothly, we'll apply that to the private estate uh, regions uh, to to increase them when that time comes. Well, there's been a lot of really lovely things going on, Bella, um, in Second Life. And there's, there's so much really cool stuff coming out at the moment in Second Life. So, yeah, then, and I can add on to that, too. And as I think I've said, uh, even here in uh, various Designing World shows uh, mm -hmm. and such, that... Uh, you know, uh, my focus on Second Life um, and, you know, my, my product roadmap and, you know, things that I want to bring to and do with Second Life, you know, it stretches out for years. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm looking two and three years down the road for what wonderful things we can continue to do together. And um, I'm not stopping there. This is certainly just another one of those steps as we move forward with it. Um. Princess Selina says people have been complaining of added lag in the last few days across the grid. Is that related to the prim increase? I, I can't actually say um, whether it would or wouldn't be. Uh, I have not seen any uh, complaints surface um, to us yet. You know, uh, 
we, we have a lot of people who, uh, you know, do a lot of very good reporting for us. Uh, and, you know, if they see things that uh, potentially, um, you know, could cause concern, and this is, again, this is exactly what we're watching and waiting for, um, you know, they'll bring it to our attention. We'll take a look at it. You know, if anybody else can also, um, uh, you know, uh, point point their finger at something that says, yeah, you know what, we, we saw this go out and, uh this is this is the effect we think it's having um you know that's that's what i want that's what i need um before i move on to the private estates uh, you know the mainland's a small product and as i mentioned it in the video um it's ours <laughs> and uh you know uh, <laughs> i certainly don't want to you know paint the image that uh, you know we're going to do testing there or or something like that but um you know it, it's a much finer control where i can take a set of you know 3000 regions um, and apply a change to it versus, you know, the tens of thousands of private islands mm -hmm. um, and pull back from that is much harder than, uh, say, the mainland. So, um, you know, I, I, I kind of selected it based on that, and that's how we move forward with it. So that's why we're watching. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, Beck. The the lab needs to say every day. Well, I think the residents need to say every day too. Second life is not dying at all. People need to stop the doom and gloom. Getting clear messages like patches just made would start to supply, dispel some of that angst. Ty, um, I know you're good at packing crimson. One of the things that I think might be good for you is the way that these extra prims can be used with LOD to help things, you know, so that creators can actually make sure that things don't flicker at a distance, that sort of thing. He's, Ty is asking, um, he's pretty good at packing a lot of crimson textures into our callus. Galadon regions. He really, really is. And from the sounds of it, by adding to that density with the additional prims available, this may still affect performance, he's asking. Yeah, so the, the only performance effect that we would, ex we would potentially expect to see would be viewer side. Um, you know, when you increase that, that the, the, the density of the objects that you could potentially see within your draw distance, you know, of course you could potentially experience that effect in the bump up of, you know, the, the, the additional items that you might see. Um, you know, the great thing is that the viewer has many controls to be able to try to, um, you know, contain that and, uh, help with that. So, um, you know, and, and as I also mentioned in the video, uh, enabling this, uh, we're, we're hoping also enables content creators to create more performant and efficient content by using all of the levels of detail layers uh, in mesh objects, for example. Um, and uh, that, that will greatly help with these types of things. That's a very slow, long, and transformative process, I know, um, because as we've seen over the many years uh, that the grid has been around, you know, we've gone from objects to sculpts to mesh, and we've also seen mesh itself kind of take various forms and uh, and, and a different variety of functions and uses uh, and stuff. And people tend to kind of bend and twist things within the system to the maximum of their capabilities. Um, and, and it's kind of like this change in itself. You know, it, it took this time for technology to catch up to us. I always like to think that we were way out in front of it. Um, and in fact, potentially in some cases, too far in front of it for our own good. Um, but with this and the fact that te technology has maybe caught up to us enough to allow us to do something like this in the first place is a really good sign. Land encroachment has generally not been an issue on the mainland ever since we enabled, um, we, or at least we don't see a lot of land encroachment like abuse reports and such. Uh, and I'm talking to Melina's question um, yeah. about encroachment there. Uh, you know, we we specifically gave the ability to um, neighboring parcel owners to have the ability to return objects that encroach over the parcel border of your mainland parcel. Um, the system does sometimes behave a little erratic, but in most cases, uh, if something is uh, jutting out over your parcel, you know, your parcel border, um, you should be able to right-click and return that object without question. I think that's something that we put in a couple of years ago. 
if it's not working right, I want to know about it. But I haven't heard any issues about any uh, heard of any issues with it. Um, Holoclock has asked if the subsequent video for this will be closed captioned. I'll. Um, we use Vimeo and we use Slartist and they don't support closed captioning at the moment. You can get closed captioning uh, on uh, YouTube. Um, it takes quite a while to translate YouTube language into suitable closed captioning. It I did the closed captioning for Lady Slipper Constantine's celebration of her life. And that was a one hour video. And it took me five or six hours to close caption it. It's, if there's anyone who would like to volunteer for helping us with closed captioning, that would be great. But I'm afraid the Designing Worlds team just don't have time to do closed captioning. Um, just to answer Sh Chantal's question, our servers going to be upgraded as an upgraded, uh, the hardware of the servers for the more prims, or is there no need for that? There's actually no need for it. We've already done it. Um, things are running really, really well. Um, and uh, does anyone want to take a guess at um, how many uh, objects on a region we actually tested to and had zero issue with it? And, and actually, I might even add, we had zero issue with it from a performance standpoint from both the viewer and the simulator side. They both ran phenomenally well, and we tested some really big numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go that crazy, but... <laughs> We, we, we definitely tested some, some pretty big numbers. 50, 60 uh, K okay, were, were not out of the ordinary um, for us to just kind of go in and say, let's have some fun. And um, have you ever seen someone empty out their inventory in a region, like just throw it all out wildly, like in a sandbox or something? That's, that's pretty much what we had to do to try to fill it. Yeah, is, there, is there a button for that? Dump inventory. <laughs> that, that would be kind of interesting. I think some of us would break the grid. I, th I think I would almost certainly break the no. grid. It was, it was a lot of fun. We did a lot of testing. Uh, let's see. All the gadgets you could put out with that much. I know, right? Um, so... Uh, Azrael or Adiko's question was um, from one of uh, the residents, will this lot affect enhance or alter mesh objects and is it pure client side or will it affect how the server calculates land impact for meshes? So that's, I'm going to actually kind of break that in half. Um, the, the lot effect um, itself already occurs with mesh objects. So your level of detail is something that is set in the viewer, and when you're zooming in and out on an object with the viewer, you can actually see um, the level of detail of an object change, potentially, depending on how it was uploaded by the creator and what your actual level of detail setting is at. Um, and that's, what, that's that LOD popping effect that I refer to in the video. Um, as to when, uh, if a creator like takes an object and uploads it only with the highest level of detail or the lowest level of detail, depending on what you have that setting set to in the viewer, and you zoom in and out or get closer, further away from it, you see it, you know, possibly pop back and forth between being like a blob and then the object you intended to see. It's very common when you have smaller items like a, a, a flower vase, for example, um, and it looks like a flower vase when you're close up to it, but then if you take ten steps back without changing your camera angles or anything like that, it all of a sudden it turns into like some twisted looking weird shape. And that's what that is, that's that effect. Um, and that's purely client side. So to kind of get into the second part of that and I'm gonna, ed I'm gonna answer this the best I can because it sort of doesn't make sense. Um, so the, the, the way that uh, the land impact calculation works is that when you upload um, uh, a mesh object, uh, and depending on where your balance is with the uh, weight of the actual mesh itself and the physical 
um, uh, the physics part of the object, um, depending on how many times you force it to render itself between the four different available levels of detail can impact the actual level of detail or the uh, land impact calculation itself. I know it's kind of long and confusing, but uh, it's long and confusing. <laughs> I don't have a great way to explain it. Uh, somebody probably really good with content creation can uh, maybe explain it a little bit better than even I can, and, and I'm pretty good with it, but uh, um, I've, I've never really found a great way to explain it. But uh, you know, people who kind of get that uh, you know, understand it. I think Beck could probably explain it, but I'm not sure. She's also quite good at explaining it in terms that I understand. Yeah. I don't know. Do we have any other questions running around? Someone just said, will setting my load higher give me noticeable lag client side? Chantal uh, said that. It can. Um, it certainly can. The higher your level of detail, the more highly level detailed objects you're going to see. And especially when you've got an object that was properly created with the multiple levels of detail, which, um, for example, our content, uh, we always use as an example for that, uh, anything that we create internally um, usually has all of its various levels of detail so that you know somebody who has a lower performing machine where their actual viewer is going to, you know, based on the automatic graphics card settings and stuff, say that your level of detail should only be a one, um, you're going to only see the first level of detail of that object, which should be, you know, uh, an almost fully rendered, you know, accurate uh, creation or faithful uh, reproduction of what the highest level of detail version of that same object should be. So the difference is, is if you're using a poorly poor, poorly perform, performing machine and you've got your level of detail set up to four, but you're running around looking at objects also that are fours, let's say in this case, um, yeah, you're, you're probably hurting your performance because um, you know, you're seeing stuff that your machine may not be able to render as well um, on the fly. Uh, so setting that down lower can actually help you, but the trade-off is, is that if you run into a lot of objects that don't have all of their levels of detail uploaded, you may not see them. They'll lod pop on you, especially when you're close and far away from them. Hmm. If we make custom lod, why not have a better land impact than someone just messes with the numbers? That would encourage content creators to make better stuff. Okay. So all I'm going to say is that we're working on that next. I feel like, so what I'll go out and I'll say is, I feel like we should be rewarding content creators for creating highly optimized content. And right now the system actually sort of penalizes you. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a double whammy, right? Not only do you get more prims, we're also going to make it so that hopefully we can entice you even further to make more performant content. Mm -hmm. So that if you do make it so that it's really performant and you've got all the layers uh, and levels of detail in them, maybe it shouldn't cost as much to upload it in the first place, land impact-wise. Yeah, that seems very fair. No, not I. I don't think. No, that not cost. Quite <laughs> <laughs> Lower land impact cost, double the charge, or double the cost. How about that? In Linden dollars. No, no, okay, don't, don't use that. Matches. Seems like band lines are a popular topic. It does seem that way, isn't it? Hey, look, what I'll say is we'll try and set something up for the next uh, lab chat, okay? And we'll talk about it because clearly it's a question that, that people are asking a lot of questions about. So maybe we make this for the next lab chat.
because it's a bit unfair to throw. Pat has come here today to talk about giving us more prims and more land impact. And so sort of, sort of ganging up on him on band lines is a bit rough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think the the message is going in loud and clear that this is an issue that people want to talk about. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, I, I've been around with you guys, and 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 probably just as long. Um, I, I I know how infuriating it is to just you know be tooling along, minding your own business, and you know you bounce off of something like that, and it's jarring, right? Um, you know, if, if you watch my um, What Second Life Is To Me video on our YouTube channel, you know, I, I, I speak to the immersiveness um, that Second Life uh, tends to envelope you in. Um, and that's, that, that takes you right out of that, right? Um, so, yeah, it, it's something I'm going to put some thought into. Mm. <laughs> Yes, I, I love the speculation when we put the, the video out that said, the trailer that said, this is going to change all your second lives. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and then people were saying, it's going to be about Bento. It's, I know it's going to be about Bento. Um, the homesteads, standalone homesteads, someone yeah, someone asked earlier about whether it would be possible for people to start buying standalone homesteads without needing a, a full place first. A full so that's first. so that is also kind of in the same vein as the potential ability to increase um, object counts on homesteads as well. Um, the reason why that limitation was originally there was uh, an artifact of open spaces. And uh, the, the, the theory was, or the justification back then was, um, that uh, it was a less substantial product that was seen as an add-on to expand the footprint of your you know, single private island type space, right? The product was originally geared for and aimed at um, somebody like me who maybe owns a single private island. I'm just out there on my own doing my thing. And I wanted to <clears throat> increase the amount of play space, as it were, that I had to be able to, um, you know, uh, do the things that I like to do, um, whether that's boating, flying, whatever. Um, in my in my space, so you know, yes, sure, you've still got region borders, and you know, you now have adjacent regions and stuff. But the concept really was was so that you could basically increase your footprint, um, and that then changed, um, as we all are fairly familiar with the change between um, open spaces to homesteads uh, and everything that that brought, um, and that that kind of that legacy uh, product restriction. Um, stayed in place, uh, and 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 that was then um, thought of as uh, uh, it was it was it was left in place because uh, people had taken a product that we didn't intend to become a, a a business model, and they had turned it into a business model, and what what happened was is people. Um, you know, developed an entire economy around that as a product, and uh, the 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 issue with us thinking about it today, and what we would have to put a lot of thought in to consider it, is what would happen to things like full regions um, if we were to remove that restriction. Right, I it's I it's it's a pretty deeply ingrained, mm. you know, uh, product developmental type thing that uh, I would have to put a lot of business thought into. But I'm just shooting straight and, uh, you know, I, I have no issue with being transparent about it and um, it's something that uh, would, would probably take a lot of thought.
I'm just checking quickly to see a couple of people. So to Russ's question, I'm sorry if I missed something and I'm skipping around, but he su su suggested maybe limiting the amount of homes that a resident can buy without buying a full region. And that's something certainly worth thinking about. Mm. I think as long, <clears throat> as long as you keep the avatar limit quite so tight, you probably can't, you know, there are many businesses that you couldn't run on it. Yeah. Yeah, I also saw a question go by a little bit ago about, you know, potentially making just larger regions and footprint. That's something that we've actually explored uh, in the past. Uh, I, I think at the time, um, we decided it wasn't uh, technically able to be done because of the way that the map and the grid tiling system and stuff is uh, uh, in place there. I don't know if it's something that we might consider revisiting at some point in the future. But hey, anything's possible, right? We just increased prims. Yeah. We have so much wonderful stuff. <laughs> the um, Earlier, when I was furnishing my Linden home, I just want to say all of that stuff I put out into my Linden home, and I'm still under 175. Well, I had the 175 prims for the um, the building, and I did the whole thing, you know, jazzing the furniture, the lawn furniture up. Not the rooftop garden. The rooftop garden had to be done separately. But, um, uh, you know, putting out the complete dining room suite and, and the display cabinet with all the little trinkets on, all of it can be done. Yep. I turn the dials all the way up to 11. Oh, Cube's asking to build at 6,000 meters. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> now he's getting ambitious. Is, is the sky the limit there? <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ah, well, he's answered that. Yeah, one. yeah, and that, and that is actually the technical reason. Um, I don't know. Maybe our next havoc upgrade is something we can look at doing. Uh, yes, Aqua Dragon. Um, his prim count will be increased now. It'll be a couple of months before it happens. Mainland first and then private islands. All right. Yes, meanwhile, Bento. Bento. Okay, well... Patch, thank you so much for coming Certainly. and talking to us and also for giving us lots and lots and lots of new prims. Yeah, I can't wait to see what people make of it. <laughs> Privates will be going out possibly in a couple of months, possibly sooner if all, all is going well with the mainland ones. Couple of months. 
making sure that everything works on the mainland first, but hopefully sooner. Yep. So it looks like Anara. Thanks, Anara. Yep. I know, can you imagine the elaborate trees we can put out now? <laughs> I'm just thinking of Fantasy Fair. I'm just thinking what they are going to do at Fantasy Fair. Can you imagine the amount of snowballs on the snowball fight region we can have now? Oh, yes. you may want to revisit a certain model. <laughs> yeah. I think someone has been recording it. Delete everything I said. I didn't say any of it. Yes. <laughs> the HIH continent. Hmm. What's that? I think somebody asked about that on the forums. I already posted about what that was. What did you say? Well, I posted a picture from within the continent. Ah. Uh -huh. I think it was me and I don't remember who else was standing there with me. Maybe Dee and Kira. There's also screenshots on my feed, yes. Can I can I tell them about uh, hmm. <laughs> Well, adult is just a, a capability, right? You know, you have certain capabilities in G-rated regions, you have certain capabilities in mature-rated regions, you have certain capabilities in adult-rated regions. They're just capabilities. Bye, Max. I think we're going to be doing another big show on something soon, aren't we? We certainly are. <laughs> we, we're, uh, we're planning a, a really, really big show on a really, really big new thing. Uh, it sh should be out in about three weeks, I think. Hello. <laughs> the, the hints are on my feed. <laughs> That's all you're getting. Oh, and in Bay City. I have to go around looking at Bay City oh, for hints. More hints. Oh, I don't know what else I can give. 
Well, there's the hint in the portal park. You probably saw those two. <laughs> I didn't say that. And that's recorded. Uh, yes, there's a portal park. Quite a lot of portal parks. If you want to get to Paleo Quest or... Um... Paleo Quest and uh, the Halloween. Oh, the Halloween was gorgeous. Yes, the Halloween Hunted Tour. It's going to be coming down soon. So if people haven't seen it, go see it before it disappears. That was really good. And then there'll be the Christmas one. Yep. That's the great thing about the new Portal Park design is that now instead of like swapping out a particular, uh, you know, one of the spokes, as it were, uh, for something being there and swapping it out and replacing it. Now we can actually have them, uh, all the spokes are persistent year-round, and we can just gate them. Mm. <coughs> uh, it, it is. You really ought to take Aqua Dragon. It's still up, uh, and you'll be able to ride that train for a couple of weeks yeah yeah I rode it was very good um portal park I think if you just do a search on the map for portal park you should see them yeah So if you go to 1A, you can actually see it. Yeah, yeah, that's a lovely picture of it, Wildstar. Uh... Hmm, I just have a thinking. Mm hmm. We could maybe put out a public region that has 30,000 on it. How Let me give mean? that some thought. Uh, well, uh, you know how we, we, you know, we filmed the show in Learning Island, right? Which yeah. has 30,000 on it. Um, yeah. And, you know, that build was actually kind of upbuilt with all of the, you know, various levels of detail having been increased to, I think it was, you know, something like 25 or 26,000. Mm. Um, and uh, we, we, we could actually put out something maybe that's really high in object count um, as an open region for people to visit and check out and stuff and see what a 30,000 object region looks like. That would be very cool. Ask oh, the team. I'll see what we've got. See if there's anything out there. <laughs> I'm sure Ancient can come up with something this evening. <laughs> uh, I, I just pinged them. All right, folks, I do have to get running. It was truly uh, great to be able to be here. And to, uh, again, um, thank everybody for, uh, you know, being here in Second Life and participating in this uh, wonderful thing that we have going. Um, I'm really glad that uh, we were able to do this.
Thank you. Uh, it's great you could come here today. I mean, great to get the prims, and thanks for coming and talking to people too. Yep, certainly. My pleasure again. Bye, everybody. Bye.